Hi, this is Fred from The Joy of Syntax and English in Color with the fourth video, I think, in which I will discuss um, back vowels. Okay, I'll get right to it. Okay, here we have a hat, German Hut. Now, notice how I round and purse my lips, Hut. The same symbol that is used to represent the long high back vowel that we hear in German hoot is used to represent the sound that we hear in the high back vowel that occurs in English moon and blue. And that's very unfortunate because as I said in the last video, we have the same thing that we have with the front vowels. Um, you know, green is a wavy, wavy soft high front vowel for English. And the um, um, German high front vowel is a very static, very snappy sound, eager, very tense, with spread lips and lots of tension in your um, palatal muscles. And eager, so, and hoot, you have lots of tension in your lips and you purse your lips, you make your wrinkles again, um, you work on <laughs> aging your face, hoot, hoot. Now, when when you know German more and you're more familiar with everything, hoot, you can get away with saying, producing the sound without pursing your lips as much. But in the beginning, it's very good to overdo the pursing, hoot, 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 which is quite different from English blue. And there's an actually, actually there's an interest there's an interesting word and my very first video that I ever made and it's really crap. <laughs> I juxtapose English mood with German mood, and then there's also um it's a mood point and mood. So English has similar sounds but they're not the same. So mood mood. Ooh, ooh. So there's no wave, it's static, it's tense. It's a very high static tense back vowel. Hoot, moot. Die Hüte. Here's the same vowel, but a little bit shorter because it's not in a stressed syllable. So we have der Humor, der Humor. Now this is it's, um, a sound that's quite similar or even the same as in English, soot or foot. Mund, hund, mund, hund. And in the plural, we have an umlaut, munda. Der Mund and munda, der Mund. Okay, this is my darling dog, Rudolf. Der Mund. Here, read this. It's important, you can stop the video and read this. Um, some people will tell you that my mouth is called Mund and his mouth is called Ein Maul oder Schnauze, also Maul is Mund for an animal. That's very rude and impolite and speciesist, I feel. So I use this on purpose. So I say his mouth. And in English, thank God, you don't make that difference. Yes, there is speciesist language in English as well, but this is not an example of it. So, mouth, mund, mund. Der Ton, oh, it also occurs in German, mond, moon, mond, der Ton, oh. And die Rosine, same sound, but a little bit shorter because it's an unstressed syllable. Die Rosine, Rosine, Rosine. Und die Rosinen. Wolke, oh, Wolke, 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 oh. And here's something interesting. Um, Wolke, when you say Löffel, you actually, when you have these umlauts, I -u, I -u. Oh, um, yeah, I mean, I mean um, e 
you use the position, the tongue position and the shape of the mouth, the inside of your mouth, for your front vowels, but you use the rounding that you use for back vowels. So the umlauts are somehow related to both back vowels and front vowels. They look like back vowels because you have the same lip rounding as you have in the back vowel for the back vowels, but because you have the same inside position, you know, the same um, tongue position and um, the degree of jaw opening as you have for the front vowels, I think it's easier to go to work on the umlauts with the help of the front vowels. Yeah, but anyway, so you could, but you could, um, if you change the position of your tongue, you can go from Wolke, to Löffel, Wolke, Löffel, And you can do the same for so you scoot your tongue forward for but anyway i find it easier to practice umlauts with the help of the front vowels if you find it easier to practice them with the help of the of the back vowels go wild also die wolke okay those were your back vowels and now we'll do our four diphthongs. So there are four pure diphthongs in, in German. Au, das Faultier, which looks for, um, oh, I don't know why there are two of these little signs underneath each other. I don't know how to get rid of that. I won't mess with that right now. There's supposed to be one. So faul, faul. So this is, um, this is what, um, Dictionary uses, I think, to distinguish this, um, the U in the diphthong from the short snappy U that is in Mund and Hund. Au, au. Now, this looks almost the same as, um, a, apart from this little diacritic sign, this looks like the symbol combination used for English brown. But for brown, you open up your mouth a little bit more. You have more of a glide. Oh, brown. And faultier. You don't open up as, mu as much because for, for German sounds, you don't open up as much ever. So, um, brown, but faultier, brown. Meise. Now, for meise, you can have a spelling E E or a e or a y, it doesn't matter. There are various spelling um, po possibilities, but pronunciation is i, meise. Again, this looks like British English i or white. However, you open up your mouth more for standard English white. I, you say I don't like it, you don't say I don't like it. I, not in standard British or American English, I, and you don't say meise, but you say meise. So again, the IPA symbol is misleading. You need to know whether you're dealing with a German word or not. The little diacritical sign that's sometimes put underneath the, the pink E shows you that this is the German IPA symbol. Meise, Meise. Eule, we have two options. We can either do a um, combination of O, oh, like Wolke and Mö, Eule, Eule, or Wolke and pink. Eule, Eule, Eule. Um, oi, 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 oi. Different quality. I actually don't know what I say when I don't pay attention to it. Eule, 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 Eule. I don't know. I think I might say either, depending on the situation. You know how it is that some you, you don't pay attention to how you say things when you speak. And then the moment you, you pay attention, you cannot be sure that you say it the same way. So you send awareness to it and you change it immediately. So that's very interesting. But anyway, there are two ways of producing the oi. But it doesn't make much of a difference. And it's not quite the same as in boy. Oi, but, but very close. So um, oi, oile, oile, boy, boy, boy. Oyster, 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 oil. So I have more tension for oil, and I have more. Yeah, I, I, I use more of the muscles. Oil, 
and I don't open up as much again. I don't say boy, ah, boy, boy. You don't say boy, oi, oi. So there's, um, it looks, this looks like, like oyster and boy, but it's not quite the same. And this one doesn't even look like this, but it's not that important. Okay, and this really, I couldn't think of many words. You sometimes say ui or a hui. Hui, das ging aber schnell. So that was fast. So hui, die Katze läuft schnell means, oh wow, the cat's fast. He's running fast. Okay, I think I'll pause the video or actually end the video here. And I will see you in the next video to um, discuss these deep schwa diphthongs with you. And then um, a few situations for what happens when the R occurs in the middle of a word. Okay, see you in the next video. Bye-bye.